Aloha. Thank you for joining us here at TruthMadeEasy.com as we continue with our Apologetics Made Easy video training course. In this video, we'll look at a couple of common objections to Jesus being God and see how a proper understanding of the Trinity can clear up many misunderstandings about the deity of Christ. We are presently studying point four, proving that Jesus is God. In our prior videos, we have seen that Jesus claimed to be God in nine different ways by claiming to be the Messiah God, the Yahweh Lord of the Old Testament, worthy of honor due only God, the great I Am with Moses and the burning bush. He also claimed to be the object of prayer like God, equal in authority with God, worthy of worship, equal with God, and one with the Father. And we also looked at uh, four lines of evidence that prove that Jesus is God. His predicting and accomplishing his own resurrection from the dead, his fulfilling of Old Testament prophecy, his living a sinless life, and his performing supernatural miracles. From that we concluded beyond a reasonable doubt that Jesus Christ is indeed the God he claimed to be. Yet, as convincing as these proofs are, many still object today to Jesus being God. One common objection we hear is, why wasn't Jesus more overt, more open in his claim to be God? Why did he seem to cloak or hide his deity in the way he talked, and why didn't he just come right out and say he was God? Well, first of all, we need to understand that Jesus was direct. There were occasions where he did come right out and say he was God. You'll recall one such occasion from an earlier slide. Jesus here, appearing before Caiaphas, the Jewish high priest, was asked if he was the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One, who the Jews knew to be God. Jesus answered very directly, I am, and then added that he would be sitting at the right hand of God and coming in the clouds of heaven. Norman Geiser and Frank Cherry comment on this passage and also another passage in John chapter 8, which uh, we looked at earlier. As we read, there are good reasons why Jesus didn't proclaim his deity more often. However, we must not lose sight of the fact that he did so often enough. Before the Jews, John 8:58 and while under oath before the high priest, when he knew his mission of sacrificial atonement was going to be completed, Jesus clearly claimed to be God. By the way, if you're interested in the book, uh, Norman Geiser and Frank Turek get into more detail as to why Jesus wasn't more open about his deity. I've uh, summarized a few of those things here. First of all, we have to remember that Jesus had a mission. He had to complete his mission of sacrificial atonement. He had to die for the sins of mankind. If he was too direct, they may not have killed him. Another reason is Jesus was our example. Instead of pulling rank as God when he got into trouble, he humbly did the Father's will and glorified the Father, not himself. Lastly, he wanted people to draw their own conclusions based on what he had revealed to them. You'll recall we talked a little bit about God being the hidden God in an earlier video and how God will be found by those who really want to find him those who really seek him. But for those who want nothing to do with God, he remains hidden. They have eyes, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Another objection to Christ's deities are his comments in Matthew 19:17, where a man asks him in verse 16, Good teacher, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Jesus replies, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is, God. Now, some conclude that Jesus here was denying that he was God, but this verse can be better interpreted to mean the opposite. Jesus is telling the man, do you understand what you're saying when you say that I'm good? Only God is good. Do you mean to say that I am God? Jesus was not denying his deity. In fact, Jesus emphasizes his deity just 11 verses later in Matthew 19:28 when he tells his disciples that he, the Son of Man, will sit on his glorious throne. Let's look at two other verses skeptics turn to when objecting to Jesus being God. As we will see, these verses can best be explained with a proper understanding of the Trinity. The first here is Jesus' statement in John 14, 28, The Father is greater than I. Well, the objection to this is, if Jesus was God, then how could the Father be greater than him? Then, in another passage in Matthew, Jesus is telling his disciples about some future events, and then adds this interesting statement. 
But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Matthew 24, 36. Skeptics claim that if Jesus really was God, he would know when these events would take place because God knows everything. Since Jesus didn't know, he can't be God. But both of these statements by Jesus can be easily explained with a proper understanding of the Trinity and the two natures of Christ. The doctrine of the Trinity teaches that there is one God and that the three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are the one God. And they each share a divine nature. As God, they are all-knowing, all-powerful, and everywhere present. As God, they have existed forever. Then the second person of the Trinity, the Son, came to earth, clothed himself with a human body, and was born in a manger in Bethlehem. We celebrate this at Christmas. This is known as the Incarnation, where Jesus Christ becomes the God-man. In addition to his divine nature, like the Father and the Holy Spirit, God the Son took on a human nature. So in his divine nature, the second person of the Trinity has existed forever. He is eternal. But Christ's existence as a human, as a man, began in time, when he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He is the unique God-man with two natures, a divine nature and a human nature. As God, he has no limitations. As a man here on earth before his crucifixion, he had limitations. As man, Jesus got tired. In John 4, 6, we learn that Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. Jesus also got hungry. We read of Jesus' temptation in Luke 4, 2. For 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them, he was hungry. And Jesus also learned things. In Luke 2, we see Jesus sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Chapter 2 ends with this profound statement. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Luke 2.52 Now, as God, Jesus was omniscient, all-knowing. But as man, he was limited in his knowledge and had to grow in wisdom. Jesus didn't know his ABCs or his multiplication tables. He had to learn these just like the rest of us humans. As God, he was omniscient, all-knowing. But as a man, he was limited in his knowledge and had to grow in wisdom. That's why when asking any question about Jesus, the God-man, we must ask two questions. How does it relate to Jesus as God? And how does it relate to Jesus as man? Here we see Christ's two natures, side by side. On the left, his divine nature, which he shares with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. On the right, we have his human nature, as man. Now let's ask ourselves a few questions here to illustrate the difference between Christ's divine nature and his human nature. Did Jesus get tired? Well, as God, no. As man, yes. Did Jesus get hungry? As God, no. As man, yes. How about this one? Did Jesus know all things? As God, yes. As man, no. Let's go back now to the verse we looked at earlier. In light of what we have just learned, Jesus' statement that he didn't know the day or the hour of end time future events makes sense, doesn't it? As God, Jesus knew all things. But as man, and speaking from his human nature, he was limited in his knowledge of what would happen in the future. And this other statement of Jesus, that the Father is greater than I, that also makes sense based on what we know about Christ's two natures. From what we have learned, Jesus, in his divine nature, is in every way equal to the Father. But here in John 28, Jesus speaking, the Father is greater than I, Jesus is speaking from his human nature. From the perspective of a human nature, his Father had a greater office. Now when we use the term greater office, Think of the President of the United States who holds the office of President. You are equal in nature to the President. You have a human nature as he does, but he holds a greater office, doesn't he? In the same way, both a father and a child are equal as persons. Both have human natures, but the father is greater in his office as the father. 
So in looking at this verse, we must remember that in his relationship with God the Father, Jesus, as a man, as a human, was less than the Father in office. The Father was greater than Jesus. So we see that a proper understanding of the Trinity can clear up many misunderstandings about the deity of Christ. Jesus Christ is God. He is God Almighty, the one and only God-man, fully divine, yet fully human. Well, now that we have completed four of the five points here in our five-point hand illustration, having proved that God exists, miracles are possible, the New Testament's a good history book, and Jesus is God, up next we come to our final point. Yes, our final point. Point five, the Bible is the Word of God. We have learned in uh, prior videos that God is absolutely morally pure and perfect, so we know that whatever God teaches is true. What did Jesus, who was God, teach about the scriptures, the Old and New Testament, what we call today the Bible? Well, we're going to find out in our next video, the Bible is the Word of God. Join us for that.